My dear wife, Jane, was to remind me never to speak after Charles Robinson. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Charles. You have done a superb job of conveying the significance of this occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, from the moment that Charles took the position of Vice Provost for Diversity, he has provided exemplary leadership to the University of Arkansas, to our community, and to the entire state. I am absolutely... <clears throat> I am absolutely so proud to be working with someone who is so dedicated to our mission and frankly, who holds our feet to the fire on our diversity agenda. He is a crucial member of our executive committee and is engaged in every decision that we make on all university matters. Charles, please know how grateful we are to you for your leadership. Thank you. I would also like to recognize Dr. Luis Restrepo, who joined the Office of Diversity in January as Assistant Vice Provost for Diversity, a professor of Spanish, Comparative Literature, and Latin American and Latino Studies in the J. William Fulbright College of Arts and Sciences. Luis Restrepo has been active in diversity issues for his entire professional life. I'd like to ask if he would please stand and be welcomed here tonight. Luis. We could not be more pleased that he is working with Charles to increase the number of underrepresented students, faculty, and staff at the University of Arkansas. Let me begin by congratulating all of tonight's honorees. You have all been selected for your character and your commitment to making the University of Arkansas a more open, accessible, and inclusive institution. And tonight, we honor you and we thank you. Insofar as it is possible, you embody the spirit of Silas Hunt. The door that he first opened, you have helped open wider for others. There is, however, still more work to be done. We must continue working to ensure equal access to higher education for all people. The legacy of Silas Hunt extends to all people who come from underrepresented or underprivileged groups seeking the same opportunities as their more fortunate peers, a chance to better themselves and broaden their world through higher education. Ensuring economic and educational equality remains very much a part of our enduring mission. Our university must continue to mirror the face of our state. We must ensure that higher education is a bridge to opportunity, not a chasm separating the have-mores from the have-nots. With this in mind, I would like to tell you a little bit about some of the initiatives that are underway and some other good news that is going on at your university. I'll start with the larger institutional initiatives. At the top is the establishment of the Chancellor's Council on Diversity last year. Fifteen faculty, staff, alumni, and state leaders are assisting in determining the university's diversity agenda, formulating strategies to disseminate the diversity message, identifying funding sources to promote diversity plans, and serving as statewide diversity ambassadors. In fact, several council members are with us tonight. One is even an honoree, and I wholeheartedly thank them for their incredible efforts. As I have said, these are the people who are going to hold my feet to the fire when it comes to pursuing diversity on our campus. The council is working with an additional two committees chaired by Dr. Robinson. One committee is focused on improving efforts to recruit and retain underrepresented students, and the other is addressing diversity issues as they relate to life on campus. These changes signify a refocusing of efforts on minority recruitment as a means of increasing campus diversity. And I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that it is working. Perhaps one of the most exciting new developments is the advent of the Razorback Bridge and Outreach Program. This program is headed up by Charles, who has assembled a fantastic team of faculty, students, and staff from the various colleges and administrative units. This group, 
visits high schools across the state and coordinates visits by underrepresented students to the campus. They're not just talking about diversity, but letting these students see who is working and studying at your university. They are informing them about what we have to offer as an institution, including available scholarship support and the ACT Academy, which offers summer AC tra ACT training. They are showing them unequivocally, uh, unequivocally that the University of Arkansas wants them to be a part of its student body. West Memphis, Little Rock's McClellan and Hall, Helena Central, Pine Bluff, Watson Chapel, Forest City, and Mariana's Lee are among the schools that have been affected by the Razorback Bridge program thus far. Others will soon join this list. These efforts have been greatly enhanced by the extraordinary generosity of Richard Green, an alumnus of the university, who recently made a $400,000 gift to augment scholarship support and expand the bridge program. <laughs> These important scholarships are named in honor of his parents, the Camden E. and Dortha Sue Green Foundation Scholarship, and will be awarded to academically eligible candidates representing diverse populations in the state of Arkansas beginning next year. A special component of the scholarship includes participation in a formal mentoring program as well as ambassadorial responsibilities. The other part of the gift is the Richard E. Green Razorback Bridge Outreach Program. This program will be a component of the scholarship in that it will provide funding for experiential trips to a location of historical significance such as Washington, D.C., Detroit, or Atlanta. The program will also provide funding to assist with recruiting future students to the university. I can't tell you how much we appreciate Richard Green's desire to bolster our diversity efforts and offer him our deepest thanks for his great generosity. Richard is with us tonight, and I'd like to ask him to stand and be recognized. Richard, thank you, sir. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there is also good reason to believe the bridge program is already paying off. This year, we've seen dramatic increases in both the number of applications and students of diverse backgrounds and the number of admits. African-American applications are up more than 11 percent, and admits are up almost 40 percent. With 121, with 121 more admits so far over last year. Overall, we're seeing a 27 percent increase in the number of minority students applying and more than a 50 percent increase in the number of admits. While this comes with the caveat that not all admits will enroll, as we know, the sheer numbers suggest we will see impressive gains this coming year all across the board. These gains will almost certainly be aided by an increase in the number of Silas Hunt scholarships from 75 to 90 as well. So simply put, nothing will do more for our diversity efforts than increased enrollment which will only create a richer campus environment that enhances student learning. This is fantastic news. We also know the Razorback Bridge and Outreach Program is working through anecdotal information. One highly capable student at West Memphis High School admitted that he had not considered the University of Arkansas until he met with members of the program who made a deep impression on him. This young man scored a 32 on the ACT when he was a sophomore. That's almost unheard of. He subsequently applied to the University of Arkansas and was offered one of the most prestigious scholarships we have, a Sturgis Fellowship. And it happened because he was actively recruited by the Razorback Bridge and Outreach Program. Just wonderful work that they're doing. The University of Arkansas and AmeriCorps have also teamed up to host the first ever AmeriCorps Promise Fellow on campus. This Promise Fellow, Rafael Arcega, 
has created and implemented an after-school mentoring program fo focused on improving reading, math, and sa standardized test-taking skills. While the program is open to everyone, Raphael has been asked by the high schools he serves to focus his attention primarily on the Latino community. And he has also already recruited more than 150 students from high schools in the Fayetteville, Springdale, and Rogers area to act as volunteer tutors. Another component of the program is simply equating, acquainting high school students with admission requirements, scholarship opportunities, and the resources available to them as they transition to college. In short, he is having a real impact in the community. The African and African American Studies program also continues to grow and improve. Dr. Robinson and his colleagues have been tremendously successful at growing the African and African American Studies program from just three students a few years ago to more than 80 now. As it has continued to grow, it has attracted a variety of students from five different colleges, and it continues to support all students, not just African American students. The program also continues to add exciting new elements. This summer, the program is planning its first study abroad opportunity. After two and a half weeks of classroom work, 18 students will travel to the West African country of Ghana for 18 days. The emphasis of the program for 2010 is examination of Ghana's past and how its history is shaping the country's future. For many of the students that will be going on this excursion, it will be the first time they have ever left the United States. Some, the first time they have ever left Arkansas. And their travel will be subsidized by study abroad scholarships. I was told that one young man was so appreciative that he literally broke down in tears after receiving the news that he had received a scholarship. It will undoubtedly be a life-changing experience for him and all of the students that are joining him. We are extremely thankful to our benefactors for enabling us to make these young people's dreams come true. Finally, let me mention the Engineering Career Awareness Program, or ECAP, now entering its fourth year. ECAP is an engineering diversity recruitment to graduation initiative to increase the number of underrepresented students entering and graduating from engineering disciplines. Recruitment strategies are grounded in educating students previously unaware of science, technology, engineering, and math career possibilities and showing them the exciting possibilities of life as an engineer. The program includes a summer bridge program, renewable scholarships, research opportunities, peer mentoring and leadership, and a freshman program combined with a living learning community. Overall, students in the ECAP program have both higher GPAs and higher retention rates than general engineering students, and we are expecting this to translate into higher graduation rates when the first class graduates. In short, ECAP works. There are many other exciting new initiatives and endeavors, but time prohibits me from dealing with all of them. Ultimately, I want you to know that we see diversity as a way to give people a chance to better themselves and be successful, to access the American dream, we also view it as an inextricable part of the educational process. Diversity makes the unusual familiar and the intolerable understandable. It turns strangers into friends and humanizes behavior and practices that otherwise seem foreign or upsetting. Diversity increases the measure of understanding in this world, the quality of compassion and the level of tolerance and respect. If there is still far too much ignorance, intolerance, and misunderstanding in the world, then diversity is the means by which we will combat it. One faculty member, one staff member, and one student at a time. Let me thank you for coming tonight. We are so pleased you are here, and I look forward to your assistance and input on our diversity efforts moving forward. And again, 
let me offer congratulations to all of tonight's honorees. Thank you so much.